And we are back here on the Twisted Mix. It is Kara in the studio with you this morning. And listen, there is an energy in the air here this week that has everyone pumped up because a true rock and roll show is coming to Penn's Peak this Saturday, December 3rd. That's right. Fog Hat with Blackfoot will be rocking the house this weekend. And today I have the pleasure of chatting with a member of the great rock and roll uh, band, Fog Hat. I've got Roger on the phone with me. How are you doing today, Roger? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. I <laughs> know. Oh, yeah, I'm doing great. Um, I got I got a couple of good nights sleep, but we were playing on the West Coast out in Reno, Nevada. Mm-hmm. So that's a long flight back. Uh, and there's no direct flights anymore. You have to go here and have to go there. But we had a really good time out there. It was snowing a little bit, Charlie, out. Lead and lead singer and lead guitar player went skiing. I didn't go skiing. No. But we had a really good time. But I'm really looking forward to coming to Penn's Peak. And we're so looking forward to having you back. I mean, I think the last time you were here was 2014. So it's yeah. about time you come back and melt our faces. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we're going to rock the joint and uh, good time. We'll be out by one of all. Um, in fact, We've been practicing furious, practicing furiously all year long. So uh, just for this show, <laughs> just for this show. Yeah. <laughs> well, Actually, you're, 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 this is the second to last show of the year for us. We have one more show after this. Okay. Okay. Well, this is going to be a big one then. Well, as you were saying, 2016. As a fan myself, I would say is a big year for you guys with the release of your new studio album, Under the Influence. And I say as a fan because this was a fan-funded album, correct? Yeah, um, the idea to do that was so that we we would have um, pre-sales of the record, and uh, our fans came out and drove, and it was fantastic. Uh, we uh, we actually charted for the first time, I think, in about twenty-five years. Wow. So that was uh, that was interesting. <laughs> um, you know, we we did a bunch of stuff like we had. Um, a thousand signed CDs. We also have about 600 signed vinyl records of the new album, mm-hmm. and uh, so it was. It was busy. My right hand recovering, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, our fans have been fantastic. Um, what I really enjoyed about making this record was it was the first time that we've used an outside producer since uh, a long, long time ago. Okay. Tom Ham was produced many, many uh, great bands. And uh, that was the best part because Brian Bassett, our lead and slide guitar player, has been producing, mixing and recording our last uh, three albums and also in anything to do with any of our DVDs. And this time we wanted Brian just to be the lead and the slide player and not have to sort of worry too much. So he did, in fact... Um, end up mastering the record. Uh, mm-hmm. And we recorded a number of the basic tracks down at our studio down in the land, Florida, mm-hmm. uh, Boogie Motel South. And we finished uh, the album up and did the last five or six tunes uh, in Nashville, Tennessee at Dark Horse Studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the real thrills for me on this record was I got to play with my old bandmate, Kim Simmons uh, from Savoy Brown. Yeah. Actually, he gave me my first real job as a professional drummer when I was 20 years old. Wow. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put a date on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, we, and we had a terrific time. A quick story. Okay. We're in the studio in uh, Nashville, and uh, I picked him up at the airport. He, he got delayed. He didn't get in until like 8 o'clock in the evening. He got stuck in Detroit for weather or plane went wrong or something. Anyway, he got there. I picked him up at the airport and I said, uh, you, you want to go to the hotel? I like, take a nap, get some food or go to sleep. And he said, is, we went there and checked in. He said, no, let's go to the studio and play. Um, one of the songs, we'd already got the basic track down. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we just wanted, Kim just needed to uh, put the lead guitars on. And... Uh, I said, you want to you wanna listen to the track through one time? He said, no, just run it through. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and and, and he, uh, he nailed it the first time when he finished the record, the first song. Yeah. 
it got a standing ovation from everybody in the studio. It was about 10 or 12 of us engineers in the band. Wow. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun making this record. There was um, there was no egos or anything like that. Everybody was... Um, also, Nick Jameson, um, our bass player on the Fall for the City album and our longtime producer on a number of records, played on a number of songs. Um, Craig McGregor played on a number of the tracks as well. Um, all around, it was, it, we had a really, really good time. It was a lot of fun. No yeah. egos. Um, everybody was just making music. Um, and it was enjoyable. We're going to play uh, two or three songs from the album. Of course, we'll play all out. It's like Slow Ride, Fall for the City, Just Want to Make Love to You, Stone Blue. Yeah. Take requests. Just don't, don't ask for any ballads because we don't play no stinky <laughs> It's a rock show. It's a rock show. Well, <laughs> we might play one Slow Blues, but that's it. But that's it. <laughs> um, yeah. So this was, you took like three years recording this album, correct? Was that around? We started it. Yeah, that we started it about three years ago. Um, it's not like, you know, back in the 70s, um, where we would do like maybe one or two albums a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, we know we take our time now. It's not a race anymore. We, we make records because we enjoy, you know, making music and being creative. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it started about three years ago. We're taking our time now. We're... Um, there's no sort of impetuous to sort of get this done right away. Yeah, you can really listen to things. Well, with that amount of time, I was wondering, did songs stick all the time, or were you finding yourself guessing a riff or a lyric or a beat during that time well, actually, period? Um, the, the initial idea for the album came. We were we were de- all down in Florida. We were, ha- we were having dinner, all having dinner one night in the studio, and. Um, we were talking about our musical influences, look the sort of songs, the sort of music that influenced us and wanted to make us make music in the first place. Mm-hmm. And that's where the title came from. Our manager, in fact, came up with the title, and we all thought that was a particularly uh, a novel. That's not really the right word, but uh, it was the right title because it, it covers so many things in, under the influence, under the influence of this, mm-hmm. under the influence of that. Um, but it's really all about music and why, you know, we do the things we do and why we've done it that way. So a lot of the songs, even though we wrote most of them, except for a couple, um, they, it, the way we played them, the styles that they were played in were our influences. So, yeah, it was, I had a really, really good time making this record. You know, sometimes when you're in the studio, it's, it's kind of like work. It is work because, yeah. you know, you have to think about what you're doing. But this record was, um, it wasn't hard to make. It was an enjoyable thing. It was, everybody had a really good time doing it. So uh, if anybody's out there, and you, do you have the record there? We do. Good, but you can play some later on after we I can finish talking to you. Definitely <laughs> will. <laughs> uh, um, girl, where was I? Um, speaking, I mean, it was so enjoyable for you. Was that type of a thing also that you didn't have like a label on your back, like, hey, we need something from you? Do you think that had something to do with it? <coughs> no, nah, not really. No. Uh, we have our own record label. Okay. Uh, and, you know, we, everything has been done in-house for the last uh, 15, 16, 17 years. Okay. We do, it all, we do it all ourselves. We have some very bright people in the band, and we have great management. Um, actually, uh, our manager, Linda, mm-hmm. uh, does, uh, designs... Uh, all the album covers and artwork. Mm-hmm. She does all the artwork. Uh, in fact, we have only women running our business. So hey, that's smart. It'll, <laughs> it's smart. <laughs> Everything gets done right. There's no testosterone getting in the way, so the band can just play and everything gets done. Um, yeah, uh, Linda's our manager. Uh, Rose is our right hand. Mm-hmm. Audrey's our bookkeeper. Um, Deb is our uh, manages all our flights and everything so it's uh, and jessica my middle daughter does all our media so uh yeah we're kind of i'm kind of outgunned when i'm <laughs> I, <laughs> I, have, it, I, I, have to, I have to behave myself you got a good team though around you then i i have yeah we yeah. have a great team everything gets done everything gets done on time but uh rarely do we have any issues the only time we have an issue is usually 
<clears throat> the plane's not working or it's delayed or something. Yeah. It's about as, as major as it gets for us. Everything else uh, works real smooth. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a great crew as well out on the road. That's good. It, everything yeah. seems like a family affair from now on in a type of way. It, yeah, it's a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> now, you brought it up, and I was thinking about it. Um, I know you have the Fog Hat wine. Was that an influence yeah. with the album cover? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. Uh, um, yeah, wine has always been our per- beverage of choice. We actually started making wine uh, back in 19... Our first wine was 2000. And- 2005, a Cabernet Sauvignon. All our uh, grapes and wine come from the central coast of California, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Santa Barbara, Santa Maria, up to Monterey County. Uh, we have a winemaker, a guy called Steve Rasmussen. Um, he's worked, he originally worked with Robert Mondavi, and then he also worked for Tally Vineyards as the head winemaker. He works with a number of other uh, winemakers, uh, but he is our chief winemaker. I go out there uh, with our manager, Linda, and help pick the grapes and actually make the wine on a couple of them. Wow. Um, and if we, I, actually, I didn't go to uh, harvest last year because we were working. Mm-hmm. Every year I go out to the harvest and help pick the grapes. Not necessarily the ones we're going to use, but I work with other farmers just uh just to learn the process, and, and it's hard work, but it's uh, it's very rewarding. One of the things I really enjoy about uh, making wine is that the farmers and the winemakers, everybody shares the knowledge. Mm-hmm. If something's going particularly well with with the grapes, you know, the farmers talk about it and the winemakers talk about it. And if there are some issues like a blight or something like that, they sh- they talk to each other about it. Whereas in a number of other businesses. Um, uh, they try to sort of keep everything quiet and like uh, so. I found that very refreshing. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, they they work together. They don't try to outdo each other in a way. Uh, but they try they try to outdo each other in the quality of the wine. But mm-hmm. to be honest with you, um, I don't think I've ever tasted uh, a bad wine from the coast of California. The mm-hmm. wines are absolutely world class and. Uh, as, as are most of the wines from California, um, and I think the rest of the world is uh, sort of sees that now. Um, yeah, this is American wine. Of course yeah. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome that you have a hands-on in it. I mean, this isn't just to <clears throat> stick a label on the bottle and saying it's yours. You know what you're selling. No, no. <clears throat> no, yeah, we, we, we're involved. Uh, with, and, and if we don't use grapes, that we've uh, actually uh, harvested well, you know, we'll, we'll uh, taste the wines if the wine's already in um, in uh, barrels or in uh, tanks. We'll be tasting them as well, be, or, or we'll be also mixing the wines. That's not the word they use, but yeah, um, uh, blending is the word. Sorry, not mixing. Blending, Roger. <laughs> it, right? Okay. They're going to hear this, and they're going to come after you for that. <laughs> no, I've only been doing it for fifteen years. What do I know? Well. I... Wine, making, wine making has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm new at it. I'm the new kid on the block. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I'll, I'll give you a higher standard for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> well, so can people pick up the album back to that Saturday night at the show? Yeah, we're going to be, we'll, um, we'll be bringing the CDs. We'll also bring uh, the vinyl. Uh, the mm-hmm. vinyl is uh, is a double record. Um, it's got it's got the same artwork as on the CD, which I think is important. Well, I mean, I remember when I was a kid and first started buying records. Um, I always loved it if I, there was a story in there and you could read about yeah. the record uh, and the various people that are playing on it. So we keep that going to this day. Yeah, everybody about to buy um, CDs, the vinyl, T-shirts, hats, all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good time will be had by one and all. It will be. We're excited. Yeah. Um, anything else you can just tease about Saturday? Obviously, <clears throat> all the hits, some <clears throat> new songs. But um, anything else? Uh, like I said, we'll be playing a couple of our new songs, and nobody will be taking their trousers off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not a pretty sight. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
just just kidding. Some may think it is, but no, uh, we won't be doing that. Okay. Um, no, it, I'm re- I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, you said you got two, this one and another concert left, 2016. What is going to be happening with Fog Hat in 2017 that we can look forward to? Anything going on? Yeah, um, we're working on a new uh, DVD. We had a record release party at BB King's uh, about three months ago. Kim Simmons played there. Also, Scott Holt, who is uh, a good friend of mine and co-wrote a number of the songs on this album. He was the other guitar player in Buddy Guy's band for about 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um we're working on an album called Earl and the Agitators, which has a couple of members of Bogat and with Scott Holt uh, singing and playing lead guitar. That, that will be coming out. We're going to finish the BB Kings uh, live recording. Uh, there'll be a, a video from that, and and there will be a CD re- release from that. And that will probably be enough to get us through the end of the year. Um, mm. Brian Bassett will be working on all that, so you know it's going to turn out all right. All right. You're a busy, busy man, Roger. <laughs> uh, yeah, busy, busy, busy. We also <laughs> have another live recording that we did out on the West Coast um, at a club out there called The Belly Up, but, um, and I've listened to that, and there's some really good stuff on it, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, we're going to have to find out. Um, make sure they check out your website, foghat.net, for everything about that. Uh, Roger, thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. Yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you, Kara. I'm looking forward to meeting you. We're looking forward to you being here. We'll see you Saturday night. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Same to you, Kara. Thanks, dear. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.